I want to promote landscape and nature as the key foundation to the future of city planning. I want to really make this the sort of focus for, for how we think about the design, planning and management of our cities, because I think we're missing a huge trick in the way we're thinking about it. In the next, uh, by 2050, the world population is going to grow by 2.5 billion, on top of the 7.7 .7 billion we have at the moment. Where are those people going to live? What sort of places do they want to live in? I'm, we think of contemporary cities as quite dysfunctional, actually. They're polluting, they, the transport systems are not terribly brilliant. Um, they're using global resources in a really weird way. So I think we've really got to sort of rethink about how we, how we think about and strategize the way we think about cities. And I think we can go back to, you know, we are beings of nature. We should remember that actually the natural world is actually our origins. We came from forests, we came from savannas, we grew up in these sort of places. And we've totally lost that in the way we think about, uh, the way we think about city planning and design. And so when we get into thinking about landscape cities, the idea that you know, the landscape becomes a preeminent sort of th way of thinking about it, wh what do we need to put into the equation? Um, for me, the color green is really important. It's a bit corny, green, landscape, all those sort of things, but actually, there's some real science behind it. Actually, in the presence of green, the pituitary gland is sort of stimulated, which enhances your levels of, of histamine, and basically, you start to become calm. There's a sort of, there's a science to that. Similarly, the visual spectrum, green is, sits right at the middle. It's the biggest part of the visual spectrum, and it's, it's where our human visual perception is most acute. It's why they use green in sort of light goggles. There's a sort of a, once again, there's a science to that. Green is the most dominant color in nature. It's, you know, the, the idea of chlorophyll and photosynthesis and the sort of basic life source for us all is derived from green. So we should be green. We should enhance green in the way we, we create our environments. And clearly also, the idea of nature, and it's obvious, but you know, we all feel better in nature, and the science is starting to prove that actually there's many reasons for that. Actually, if we go outside, there are certain bacteria and microorganisms that become part of our microbiome, which make us happier. There are actually specific bacteria that they've found that actually do that. Being in nature, being part of a green environment reduces stress, it improves mental health, it improves the way we think about things, it improves creativity. All of the th there's research there to show this, and yet, you know, still in the way we think about cities by and large, landscape is put to one side, green is put to one side. It's changing though, because of this, and because we need to put this front and center into the, into the world. So, Landscape cities, to me, is a very exciting concept, and it's not a new one, basically. I mean, places like Edinburgh, where you have a very profound sort of foundation built on the landscape, built on this sort of volcanic landscape of the, the crags and where the castle sits. Um, really powerful sort of sense of, of a you know, historic city, landscape city. Another one which is more current is Singapore. Singapore has actually taken the idea of landscape and, and, and greening to the nth degree. They now define their whole identity as a, a city in a garden, overriding everything. There are policies that drive the greening of the city. Every building has to replace its footprint with at least 100% green space. Um, many, many policies go all the way through the, the, the way they think about it. And, and we've been very lucky, as, a, as myself, as a landscape architect, to, to, to work in that place on um, amazing project called Guns by the Bay, the sort of super trees, which have been grabbed as this sort of symbol of the city in a garden. It's about the future. There's a future perspective here. It's about how do we rethink the identity of our place? How do we promote our sense of um, management of the resources we have? How do we, how do we bring people together using landscape to create amazing destinations, amazing places to gather? And I think, you know, for me, that's been a great sort of lesson in terms of the power of landscape and nature in cities to drive things forward. And obviously in London, they're very excited about this as well. The National Park City has been promoted, you know, it's going to be happening next year. 
Imagine the whole of London as a national park. It's a really exciting concept because it places the green space and the, and the water and the networks and all those things that go with it, the nature as a sort of driving lifeblood of the city. And I think that's really something that we can do. But actually, Bath, in many ways, is the sort of definitive landscape city. Um, for me, it's always a fantastic reference point when I'm designing because it actually has this combination of architecture and landscape and nature absolutely in plain sight for everybody. And it's been around, you know, this sort of idea that there's this beautiful sort of balance of, of, of landscape and architecture and living in Bath has been around for many, many years. And I think it sort of gives us a sort of a, a real chance to start to celebrate the city. Yes, we are a World Heritage site. It's one of only two major World Heritage sites that are entire cities. Bath is unique because its citation includes the landscape. You know, this is something we should celebrate, and it's something the world can look at and learn from. I think, you know, as the, w the rest of the world gets busier, more development happens, Bath is going to become much more of a reference as this beautiful, tranquil place, um, more attractive to tourists, a better place to be for us, you know, the, look at the, the people who are lucky to, to live here. It's going to be, we're going to really value it more as the rest of the world goes a bit mad. And, you know, the, the people have recognized this for many, many years. 600 years ago, um, a, a guy talking about the landscape setting of Bath, to, to which nothing um, in the world is, is equal in respect of uh, beauty and delight. What a lovely way of thinking about the, the landscape of Bath. And going back to that green thing, Bath is surprisingly green when you start to look at the context of it. You know, if you look at any, any typical view, looking out from the city centre or from around the edges, it's probably more than 60% of that view is actually green landscape. That's why we like living here. Yes, the architecture is beautiful, but that is a key ingredient of why it's really great to be here. And as we go forward, we need to find ways to actually manage that resource better, get more people engaged with that, make, more, make it more accessible. And, and late last year, I was sort of it, invited to be the, the chair of the, the Bathscape uh, Landscape Partnership, which is a fantastic project, which is looking at making the whole of the bath uh, setting, landscape setting, more accessible to people, more engaged with people, looking after the qualities, the physical fabric of it. Um, and we're hoping that, you know, the Heritage Lottery Fund, if they approve our bid for 1.8 million, we can set forth a whole range of projects which are going to really sort of start to, to set a new agenda for Bath in terms of the way we work with our landscape. And if, if Bathscape is actually the, the mechanism for actually making everything start to work together, projects like Forest of Imagination, which is on in the city at this moment, highlight how we can mobilize as a community to sort of work with the creativity inspired by the landscape, uh, respond to sort of environmental challenges, and actually have a great time. It's not just about the science of, of uh, being, feeling healthy and funny and all those sort of things. It's about having fun and coming together as a community and a creative community at that. So, Bath is at the, I think it's really at the sort of frontiers of actually doing some amazing things in the terms of the way we, we manage our landscape resource, how we engage people, and there's lots of projects all starting to go. Bathscape, Forest Imagination, Festival of Nature, Waters of Bath. Um, we can implement all those and we can make this place a just the most amazing landscape city, the most inclusive, the most child-friendly, most creative, artistic, green, best place to live in the world. It is a jewel in Britain. It is one of the most amazing places in the world to be. And I think we can keep that going. Thank you.